And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Blue Monday, I'm a high blue Monday. Got to work, plan to sleep all day. He'll come to... The first line of defense against radicalization is in the Muslim American community. People who we should be welcoming and right, working right, with. Right, 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 I right. worry greatly that the rhetoric coming from the yeah, Republicans, right. particularly yeah. Donald Trump, is sending a message to Muslims here in the United States and literally around the world that there is a clash of civilizations, that there is some kind of Western plot or even war against Islam. Uh, hello? Hello? If you got your nose out of your bank account for two seconds, you'd wake up and smell the gunpowder, Hillary. They've been at war for 1,400 years. I guess you didn't learn that at Radcliffe. What else didn't you learn at Radcliffe? You know, today is the 21st of September. We should all be calm now and welcoming uh, the holiday that really is the chief holiday of the West, Christmas. C-H-R-I-S-T, Christmas. Christ Mass. Now, as I said to you, the date is, of course, obscured in history, but nevertheless, it's a tradition that we celebrate uh, the birth of Jesus. Now, why? Because Christianity is the fundament of the Western civilization. I know under Barack Hussein Obama, it's not. But we'll get to that in a minute. I want to go back to the fact that it's the 21st of December. Most people's minds are not on politics. Our minds are on family, travel, friends, as they should be. And we really have to thank God that we have such a great country that can even survive Barack Obama. We have to have thanks to God that the creators of this nation, you call them the founding fathers if you wish, were so brilliant that they could anticipate a man as evil and as anti-American as him and prevent a further meltdown that has already occurred. And we the people are stuck in the middle of it all. Whether it be the terror event by the two Muslims, what was it, 10 days ago, two weeks ago in San Bernardino, the Boston Marathon bombing, wherever we turn, we see radical Islam and its fangs here in America because of Barack Obama. And I'll get into that in a minute as to why I blame him for this spread, the cancer. I also blame the, the generals, the cowardly generals, who, no matter how brave they have been on the battlefield, are cowards on the political field. All of these generals who know what he is, who know what he's doing, who know what his allegiances are, have nothing to say while they're working for him. And the minute they retire, suddenly they're brave and bold. And they step out like a talk radio host. And they tell us about 80% of what they really know. If they ever told you what they really knew, you wouldn't be able to accept it. If one of these generals ever came out and they saw, said, we saw him on a prayer rug, you wouldn't believe it. No, it wouldn't matter. After all, Islam is not the problem. Ask Hillary Clinton. Wouldn't matter if he isn't a Muslim. Would it matter if Brennan is a Muslim or anyone else in the, in the uh, executive office is a Muslim? Why would that matter? So what's going to happen in this final year? Bush watched the economy fall off a cliff in his final year. Of course, he drove it off a cliff. He didn't watch it fall off a cliff. He engineered it off a cliff. The bumbler watched it fall off a cliff. No, he didn't watch it fall off a cliff. I warned you in, a, in August or September of his last year, Bush that is, watch what he does in the last six months. I warned you, I called him a fiscal socialist. That's right, I, Mr. Right-Winger, called Bush a fiscal socialist. Who was right, me or you? Ronald Reagan, the great one. The man greater than everyone on earth was ensnared in the Iran-Contra scandal. That ruined his... Uh, his final year. Bill Clinton impeached in his final year. Woodrow Wilson had a stroke in his final year. What's going to be Obama's final year? This man is such a maniac. He is such an egomaniac and has never been subjected to any criticism ever in his life. Never has this man ever faced any criticism ever. He's gotten away with everything his entire life. He has skated over everyone. So what might he do? a man who cannot be reined in by reality, a man who insists that he is winning the war against ISIS, 
when ISIS is spreading its tentacles around the world. A man who insists that he knows what he's doing, even though he has sabotaged the economy for years to come. He's going on and on saying, I've never been more optimistic about a year ahead than I am right now, before dashing off to his 70 millionth vacation. Another vacation with the family. He's worked so hard, and he spent $70 million since he's been in office on family vacations. So what might he do in his, uh, in his uh, last year of uh, absolute power it is a question we're going to talk about. But I want to go back to my main point. We really are thankful, we should be thankful rather, than the, that the Founding Fathers were so bright that they could even envision a monster like him appearing and stealing the presidency and wrecking everything he could put his hands on because he has such an antipathy for the nation. And we've survived it so far, more or less, haven't we? What could it be if it was any worse? Well, over the weekend, I read a story about a small army that is fighting the Islamic State to protect their people, the Assyrian people. You say, well, who cares about that? I want you to listen to it very carefully, and I want you to understand how cynical and how useless Hillary Clinton is as a mouthpiece for women. She is a disgrace to women themselves, a disgrace to not talk about the rape and the murder of young girls in the Middle East by ISIS. And we have uh, a speech from one of the survivors who spoke before, of all places, the U.N. Security Council, of the ordeal that she endured while the Islamic State used her as a sex slave. She said rape was used to destroy women and girls and to guarantee that these women could never lead a normal life again. The terrorists raped Taha until she passed out. The sadistic vermin, the subhumans, the untermenschen in ISIS captured this little girl in August 2014 as they were raging across Iraq and Syria and Obama fiddled while Syria burned. And they did things that I can't even read on this show to this girl. They separated the girls from their parents as the far as they, I, look, there's a video of it. Someone captured a, uh, got a secret video out. I put it up on michaelsavage.com and you hear these girls screaming as they're separated out from their mothers and fathers to be used as sex slaves by these vermin, these subhumans who should be torn in pieces, by the way, when they're captured. But don't get me started on what's appropriate here. Please don't get me started on, you know, as I watch this video of the girls crying and screaming as they're being pulled away from their parents over the weekend, I got so enraged that I said, this is going on in the year 2015, while Mark Zuckerberg is worrying about how to make another billion dollars tomorrow, while Barry Obama is wondering how we can humiliate the Republicans tomorrow, while Hillary Clinton, the liar, the liar of liars, as Hillary Clinton, the worst of them all. Not a word about the women being raped in the Middle East. She represents women. A cockroach would represent womanhood better than Hillary Clinton for ignoring this rape. In our time, kidnapping, rape, slavery. Some fam females are sold for weapons or for just $10 or 10 cigarettes, said activist Kadir Damle, who interviewed numerous Yazidis. In October, a young Yazidi woman known only as Noor told CNN that the militants justified raping her because the action would make her a Muslim. Muslim! He showed me a letter and said, this shows any captured woman will become Muslim if 10 ISIS fighters rape her. They're not at war. Nah, they're not at war with the West. They're not at war with everything decent on Earth. The terrorist 11 friends raped her as well. Well, who's fighting back? You? You, you liberal progressive vermin? You, you liberal progressive rats who care nothing about anybody but your own advancement? Robert De Niro, the great actor. Why do I bring him up? I think about him a lot. I think about how tough this man really is and how useless he is for the people of the world who are really suffering. I think of all of these false progressives in Hollywood who pretend to care about the downtrodden and say and do nothing about the kidnapping, murk and, murder, and slavery going on right in front of their eyes in the Middle East. Nothing. Zero. Who's fighting them? Well, here's the thing. There's a small army fighting the Islamic State to protect their own people. And it started with only 12 men. And most of the men are older men, 50, 60, 70 years old. I could not believe it. There's a picture of them on michaelsavage.com that I dug up. Left side, go down onto the website. 
It's from a, a weird site, OcasoMedia.net. I don't know. I don't even know how I found it. A small army is fighting the Islamic State, standing tall to fight ISIS in Iraq and Syria. Tough soldiers deny ISIS full control of key strategic area, the Assyrian, the Neva plain. These forces defend Christians in Iraq and Syria, created when their wives sold their gold wedding rings and crosses to arm them. And if you look at the pictures of these men, they look like your father or your uncle. And these 12 men started the army. We have the leader of their army on this show today in about one hour. And we're going to raise a ton of money for these people. I'll tell you right now, I'm going to make a surprise donation on this show and I'm going to ask you to make a donation to them. We've checked them out as good as we can. Truthfully, I hope that they're as real as they look. I hope the money goes for weapons, bullets, bombs, Kalashnikovs, RPGs. I hope it goes for everything they need to kill the subhumans, the subhumans that could have been wiped off the planet if we had a real American commander-in-chief. Standing tall to fight ISIS in Iraq and Syria. These, uh, uh, this is the Assyrian army. Now they went from 12 to 60. And thank God some of the warplanes that we have were, I don't know how, used to strike ISIS forces advancing on their last holdout. And then their 12-man team worked to extract the Syrian families from the battle zone. Can you? What I'm saying to you is this. Do you realize how lucky we are to still be living in an America where this is not going on since we have such a, a subversive in the White House? I guess that's what I'm trying to say to you. Do you realize how bad this is? really could be if this subversive had not been controlled thus far. If him and David Axelrod really had their way, that snake. Whenever I see David Axelrod, I want to smash the television set with a, with a sledgehammer. He's the worst of them all. Now he's Mr. Make-Believe, um, Mr. Normal American, a lifetime red diaper doper baby rat who hates this country from the bottom of his toenails to the fungus-ridden nostrils. That's who they are. These progressives are suicidal maniacs. And they could have brought all of us down with them, but they're not through yet. They have another big year left before this is all over. Now, you may say this is a little harsh for the Christmas week, and I suppose it is. But, you know, when you're eight years old and you're being raped and there's no one there to help you, I guess someone in America has to stand up and be a little, a little angry every once in a while and maybe shake up all the Christmas holiday shoppers to how good... They have it, and how bad things could really be, and how bad things really are somewhere in the world. And don't tell me about Black Lives Matter. I don't want to hear one more word about those fraudulent crybabies. They never had it so good. Let them into Yale, and they scream and yell at professors and throw them off campus because they can't keep up with the classes, and they say it's racism and white privilege. How much garbage can we take in this country everywhere you turn? Why is it happening? You don't have to look any farther than the vacationer. Back in a minute. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or Swiss America. He kicked me and he beat me. A few minutes later, another man came up to me. I was still looking at the floor. I saw that he was a little bit smaller. I begged him. I implored him to take me. I was incredibly scared of the first man who was so big. The man who took me asked me to change religion. I refused. Then he asked for my hand in marriage, so to speak. That night, he beat me. He asked me to take my clothes off. He put me in a room with the guards, and then they proceeded to commit their crime until I fainted. She was then raped by 12 men. 12 subhumans, who, as far as I'm concerned, should be captured by special forces and torn apart in pieces on public television for the world to see and to send the message to the other brave vermin around the world who want to join ISIS that when you're captured, we'll tear you apart in a public square and put it on pay-per-view. They took the young girls, 7, 9, and 10, explained the young girl to NBC News in early December. ISIS held her for almost a year before she escaped. The guards held the women and children at a school separate from the men. At night, these same guards raped the women. They said, if they rape you, you're becoming a Muslim. That's why we're allowed to rape you. And he showed me a letter, a letter with the flag of ISIS and a picture of ISIS leader Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi. The terrorists 